Well, so my guest for the morning, James Apietuankra, is a former member of parliament for Lower West Achim, and he's here in the studio. Thanks for joining me. Thanks. Okay, yeah. doesn't usually appear in the studio in, in, in suit, uh, neck and tie. Yeah, he's here. How are you? I'm fine. You look good. Thanks. Right. And um, a former member of parliament also of Infantiman East, but now an aspiring member for Ekumfi. Well, same constituency, just name changed due to the demarc redemarcations that were undertaken in the last um, um, election period or prior to the election period. And uh, George Kuntu Blankson is here. Thanks for joining me, Uncle George. Thank you, my brother. Right. Uh, how's the campaigning going? Well, you know, even fascinatingly, the, the name of a confi first it was um, Fantimanis. Yes, sir. Do you know how I influenced the change? You did? Uh -huh. Yeah, because I forced the You wanted area it to, to represent be, tradition. To be cre created as a district. So, in theory, when the district was created, they have to name it after mm -hmm. the district. So, it's now a confi district. And uh, I have another design of which I'm going to use. I've already forwarded it to EC in connection of uh, annexing the existing communities that has been left with Infantiman West, i.e. Nananum, i.e. Edumaze, which the thing So Edumaze, and Edumaze. then also Yes, it's part of Nananum. Ekumfi. And uh, when... You're part of the Ekumfi Yes, when I get a nod to Parliament, that is what I'm going to pursue. So I will be totally related from West. Okay. So our de development will be faster. Right. I'll call the marketing department. We'll have to search out you for the advert. You're but you know, the gift of bicycle is free. <laughs> 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 well, suspended chairperson of the Shrad, that's the Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice, says she would have accepted to live at her official residence instead of renting a hotel room for nearly three years, an action that had cost the state more than $148,500. US And uh, now she's being uh, asked by the president to step aside and this follows intense investigations and thereafter her report was presented and this very decision has been taken. Uh, I have to start with you, um, Mr. Kuntu Blankson. What do you make of uh, this? This uh, seemed to have me long in coming. Yeah, uh, it's better late than never. It's better late than never. And let him take this opportunity to greet our viewers out there and wish them a merry morning. Because once God gives you life in the morning, it's a new year. Because not people get what you've gotten. So we have to use the opportunity to thank God and also wish everybody who is alive a very good morning. And without much delay, I want to just go to the substantive topic you've brought at our disposal to discuss. As I said earlier on, that is never late than never. At the end of the day, we have reached the end of the situation. Because, you know, this issue came out as a topical issue, discussed length and breadth of this nation. Everybody was talking about it, thinking that even the president was going to shelve this woman. But thank God the truth is ever truth. You cannot circumvent the truth. At the end of the day, the truth will focus. It's like pregnancy. Once a woman is pregnant and the mother and father called him and said, hey, Kui, are you are pregnant? He said, oh, that day is not true. At the end of the day, within eight months, a true surface. So I thank God that the issue now has been dealt with. But uh, any legal battle that needs to be taken should be taken so that it will serve as a deterrent for others who might think that if you mismanage state resources, you can go free. You cannot escape, I mean, misusing state resources because the state resources belong to the state. And I, I thank God when you go through to the report, you could see that now the woman herself has realized that what she was doing, it was against the state. But all what I want to tell people in position that, positions are no possession. Positions are no possession. It's something you are called to serve. And you must serve with regards to the, the ethics of the position you have been put. Not to your own aggrandizement. Don't think you can be there in perpetuity. Because... If you don't do what is right, the time will catch up with you. And always in life, there's a payback time. When you do the right thing, the time will catch up with you in the right time. When you do the wrong thing, the wrong thing will catch up with you in the right time. Because posterity judges everybody. And I thank God that this issue has come to its logical conclusion. And I pray with all and sundry who collaborated for us to get to the bottom of the matter with truth 
that they should be applauded and make sure that whatever honor that is given to her is given to them. So that whoever also is somewhere doing the same thing, thinking that he will go scot free, time is coming, he cannot escape the blame. Mm. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Roland. Uh, I am seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm not enthused about order. You, th you think it's uh, m much ado about nothing? It's just taking too long to, you, you know, uh, give us that inspiration that the uh, president is seriously wanting to fight corruption and other misdeeds in public office. It took Richard Nyama one page to pursue and pursue. And in fact, about two weeks or so, three weeks ago, he had to again issue a, a state of public demanding that the president acts. And I think that's not good enough. That's not good enough. And you, th you think that it's as if it has to take excessive pressure, pressure. from society? Absolutely, civil, civil society to get the president to act. And I don't think that is good enough. It will not be... Uh, a deterrent to other people who are in public office and... Uh, Mr. Abituanka, what happened to making sure that you respect people's right to, well, the rule of law and sure. whatever that the law also grants them, you tend to also respect that? No, uh, perfect. Is that not the same thing that the president tried doing? No, pre the president went through and got the report over four weeks, one month after. And I thought that, look, the, the speed with which you act will be the deterrent to other people that, look, if you do this thing, this is what will befall you. But it, if you wait until pressure comes from civil society, Mr. Uh, uh, Vitus Azim's uh, organization, and the one who lodged the complete Richard Nyama, to, and you give the impression that, but for these things, you probably would not have acted, and that perhaps, as usual, Ghanaians uh, uh, easily forget things and that if you delay a bit they might forget and move on to the next uh, issue because every week every day there are new issues coming up so I would have thought that the president is good that he is he's acted but I, I thought that would have, because we, look people are still asking questions about uh, Jida uh, those uh, what, what is it the computer my what is his name, who was giving some money to her and he said he would pay some. As at yesterday, people are demanding from the Attorney General to see what has happened. Goyome, they said they had uh, gone to appeal. They had no indication whether the appeal has actually been filed. So you are not and comfortable with the swiftness with which perhaps government tends to act, act on absolutely. some of these things? These things. Mm. Because I believe that that is what will deter other people who are in public office and doing But this one things. won't be a deterrent as well. No, I mean, Let's say you occupy a certain sensitive position or a public office yeah. and you still do things. If it's two years uh, later, the law will still catch up with you. Oh, absolutely. That, that's, and, that's and, you don't want to, and you don't want to commend the president for taking an action like this because it was only the president who could have taken an action like absolutely. this. Absolutely. Even I, though he I, has a report, he has to take the action. Yes. And he so has that, taken the action. After one month when a report has been submitted to you, if you get serious. You're saying, I bet it's too late. I think so. Okay. I, I think so. It's coming in too late. Yeah, you see, my brother, as I said earlier on, that it's better late than never. And, you know, in our local adage, people say that uh, patients move mountains. Mm. And uh, 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 <laughs> if a situation of such nature concerning citizenry happens, you have to be tactful in dealing with the situation to get up with all the incumbrances of the issue before you can come out totally to take a decision. Decision taken in a rush will end up in residence. Well, the for president kids. has a report. You, because this uh, followed consistent calls for I'm, I'm investigations I'm to be coming, undertaken. I'm coming. The reports when you were submitted. Yeah, when I, why did the president have to take I'm, so long? I'm coming. If I commission you that do this report for me, when you bring the report, I have to take time to study the report so that know that the merit and the merit of the report. The total action I need to take after studying the report, I have to give the recommendation that such an act should be done on the person who would act as before them, he or her. You understand? And one way or the other, it's also a lesson to the public and the civil society. Like he's saying that it took... He's saying it's a uh, lesson coming too late. I'm, no, no. In other way, it's too late for him. Then because, I said, because within the period, well, he's, he's surmising that 
uh, a lot of acts which could have been prevented if an early action was taken could have also been prevented. And I'm coming, you understand my, as a social worker, you, you understand where I'm coming from. Look, this situation that we find ourselves now, though he's saying that it's late, but I said earlier on that it's better late than never. At the end of the day, we've gotten to the bottom of the matter, and we have seen that the woman has a head. And that alone is a lesson to the public. And it's, I mean, victory for rule of law. And victory for, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, human rights. Because the right of the woman also is at stake, irrespective of whatever situation she finds herself. She must be respected as a human being. For that, that matter, we should treat ourselves with decorum. Because inherent in the Constitution. Very good. Are those very good. Actually, very good. So the, the president is following the tenets of the Constitution. And he must be applauded. Because he gave the matter to an authority to deal with. They've come with the report. It takes he also to go along with the constitutional mandate to start with. Fine. Coming to being of the civil society, mm. putting pressure, that is the responsibility of the civil society. To see that things are... So you're are, saying that no matter whatever it is, I'm that's telling their you, I'm telling you, because this their responsibility to make sure that people in authority, people in opposition, I mean, bow to the, the demand of so the people. So you're saying the comments of Mr. Peter Ankara is just one of those? Oh, well, he's also making his opinion ahead. Because he's in opposition. Exactly so. But that's not fair. Well, you understand because where I'm Because at the end of the day, it's a, it's a subject that borders on people's interests. Of course. And we're talking about the taxpayers' money. Of course. Sure. And the way public officials tend to conduct themselves when they're in the office. And that is very um, critical in judging the way also people will behave in other public offices as well. Now, we have to conclude on this. What do you, do you, do you think we need to, we, to do as a country, fourth way, that when we have such cases, we will be in a position to deal with them expeditiously? For instance, uh, the president had promised us that he will be fighting Corruption. But so far, he's taking actions that tend to give us an indication that he's he's doing something. But you about. see, like I said, you're saying he's not he's not doing enough. I, 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 that is so. That is exactly that is what I'm saying. That look, if you take a, 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 a situation, you let the person go through due process. You set up your committee. You allow the person to also come and, as it were, have his, his or her lawyers and that to present her case. And at the end of the day, the committee presented what well, It's not the, the president, of course. I don't expect that the president will be reading every report verbatim that comes to you. I'm sure at the presidency, that's why it's the place is called a presidency. There will be people there who will be doing some of this work and doing executive summary and that's for him to look at. And in order to uh, send the, the fear of God, to put the fear of God into people, two weeks after uh, the community's report, you are satisfied that your, your subcommittee at the presidency says, look, listen, there's no doubt about it that this is what the person has done. Straight away, you come out of a view. But when the thing keeps, you know, dragging, and then civil society and the, those who made a complaint will have to come issue a statement, it creates the impression that, you know, as usual, because the truth of the matter is that if it's an isolated case, but we've all come to that, that I mean, we, I can't fault NDC, uh, uh, current government alone, but present government have done that, and Ghanaians have become agitated. Like, look, it looks like our governments and politicians have been taking us for a ride. When there's something they try to do, de darling, when we forget slightly about it, it's swept under the carpet, and that, that's the end of the matter. So, if all of us have come to the realization that we need to do something about it, if you go beyond that and say that the person has caused financial loss to the state, so, you know, uh, uh, the criminal aspect of the he should also go on. Within two weeks, I believe that this should come out from the presidency. And that will put the fear of God into... Swift people. action, you say, Absolutely. is a deterrent. It's a deterrent. To others. To others. Mm. I think that you make a lot of sense as far as that is concerned. But also, uh, whoever is involved, the people involved in whatever actions or inactions also have rights.
Well, no, 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 that's what yes. the people... And it doesn't matter because, and due process. Because, because a committee or, let's say, an agency uh, mandated to investigate comes out with a report doesn't mean that no, the president so the, also doesn't need to have hindsight. No, he does, he does. That's right. why the president, the, uh, nobody should expect the president to read all the reports that come before him. There is so, oh, mm. always some committee at the presidency that will do the executive summary and... and